This is my 1950, well, was, and I'll explain that in just a minute. This is a 1957 GMC 100 pickup truck. Let me get this truck pulled out of here, get it pulled forward, and I'll walk you around and get a closer look. All right, guys, I got this thing out. Got it in position so I can work on it now. What I'll do is I'll just walk you around it and I'll show you the truck in, up close and in detail. And uh, I'll tell you exactly kind of what's gonna happen with it, what my plan is with it. I found this truck a few years ago up on the Navajo Indian Reservation in Northern Arizona. The truck was being advertised on offer up in the Phoenix area, but the ad also stated that the truck itself was actually located up on the reservation. Now the ad was several months old, so I had no idea if they still had it. So after getting a message back that they had it, and getting some additional pictures and talking to the owner on the phone, I decided to take a chance, make the four and a half hour drive and go up and take a look at it. Once I got up there, this is what I found, a nice straight, rust-free Arizona truck. Now the truck hadn't been running in many, many years, and some of the body and paintwork had been started. Now the guy that I bought it from got it from a friend of his who was going through a divorce. And this guy just basically lost interest in it, I think, and decided to sell it. I don't have a lot of history on this truck, but I was able to track down a couple different addresses, one in Phoenix and one in Mesa. So I do believe this truck has spent most of its life in Arizona. And again, this truck has no major rot on it whatsoever. The body is very clean. It does have some Bondo in it in a couple areas, but nothing major. I almost walked away from this truck when I went up and looked at it. I was actually looking for something that had more of a patinaed look. And this thing was in primer, and I could tell it had some Bondo in it, so I was a little concerned. I grew up with a dad that was a body man and owned a body shop for many years. And I can remember him telling me as a kid, he's like, don't buy anything that's in primer because you never know what they're covering up. So that was a concern of mine. But after looking this thing over really carefully, I could tell there was very little mud in it and just absolutely zero rust. And I knew I was going to have a hard time finding something else this clean. I did try to start it when I picked it up, but... I had a number of things go wrong. I had a weak battery and I just couldn't get the thing to crank over very well. It had some bad cables and whatnot as well, so I couldn't really get it to run at all. But I really wasn't concerned about the engine anyway. So after hauling this thing home and sticking it in the backyard, it sat there for a couple of years and I just really didn't know what I wanted to do with it. I did collect some parts for it over the years and I kind of had a basic idea of what I wanted to accomplish. But the truck, for some reason, just didn't talk to me, and I don't know why. So once I decided to go ahead and move on from it and sell it, my sister-in-law expressed a lot of interest in the truck, and I kind of chuckled at first, and I said, Are you sure? And she said, Yes. She says, I want to buy it, but I want you to restore it. And I said, Well, okay. I says, I think I can do that. So after negotiating a price and discussing basically what she wants out of this truck, we began to hatch a plan. Now she wants this thing as modern as absolutely possible. She wants to drive this thing back and forth to work or she wants to drive it up north to car shows or wherever that may be and not have to worry about it. She doesn't want to mess with anything. So this thing will basically get a modern drivetrain, more than likely an LS. She wants to get in it, turn the key and go. She does not want to mess with carburetors or any of that type of thing. So for the most part, we have a game plan of how she wants the truck built. So the first step in this build is I'm going to do a complete disassembly of this truck uh, down to the bare frame. I'm going to rip the body completely out off of it and get the body all stripped down. Everything is going to be repainted from top to bottom on this truck. Before I tear this truck apart, I think the first thing I'm going to do is just see if I can't get this engine running real quick. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I just want to see if it'll fire up. All right, so there you saw, did a quick walk around of this thing. It's pretty clean. The truck overall really is very, very solid. It's a good Arizona truck. There is really no rot that I see on it. And I don't know what they covered up, but I'll discover all that later. So, but for now, I mean, the floor pans, everything in this truck is really good condition. So, but first thing I want to do, I just want to see if this thing runs. Now, 
When I went to pick this truck up, I tried to get it running, but I could not get it running. I had a weak battery. The starter didn't sound right. It was really weak. There was all kinds of stuff falling out of the bell housing in this thing, um, like a you know mice nest and all that. So I it it didn't. I wasn't able to get it running, and I wasn't really concerned about the engine anyway. It wasn't. I didn't care about it honestly. So I did run the numbers. It comes back as like a 302, 307, something like that. Uh, I think it was 60s vintage. It's been about a year or so since I ran the numbers, but nothing special. Um, so I got to retime it. I pulled the distributor out of this thing. I had to use, I borrowed it to start another engine that I had. So I got to retime the distributor. I do have the carburetor for it. It's in the garage and then just hook everything back up and uh, I got to put the starter in it. I got a new one for it a while back. And so I got to throw that in there and crank this thing over and see if it'll start. Yep, I always pick the wrong time to start these projects. All right, so I got the starter ready to go back in. And of course, eh, this is the best cable I had laying around, so this should be fine. All right, I'm gonna try to hold this thing up here. Here's all the old wiring from the old starter. I'm not worried about any of this stuff. I'm not gonna use it. <laughs> This thing rigged up with a battery. I'm gonna to try to find top dead center here. I got the number one spark plug out of it. All right, that's close enough. I guess I got lucky when I dropped it in. All right, let's distribute our clamp down first. You would think these engine compartments would be have a lot more room to work on these things, but they really don't. They're actually really tight in here. This distributor is right up against the firewall too. This thing's got some custom handmade front motor mounts and they put the cap on. Yeah, this thing's right up against the firewall. So, and I've just got a little jumper wire here that's gonna go directly to the battery for power. Hopefully I can advance it enough because that thing is smashed against the firewall. All right, I should be fine. Let me get the carburetor put on. carburetor bolted down. I'm going to go ahead and just pour some fuel on this thing and I'm just going to get right after it and see what happens. Well, it's going to fire it looks like. Now let me put some more fuel in it. I'll try to get it in the bowl here. I don't have a fuel line to uh, hook up to the fuel pump. doesn't sound good though the motor doesn't sound good so she's war she is definitely beat I think let me see if it's squirting there yeah it's squirting fuel
sounds. It definitely sounds whooped though. A little bit of blow by coming out of the uh, old vent there in the valve cover, but it does run. It's a lot further than I got last time. Last time I tried to start it, it just I could not get it to to fire off right. So let me put a little more fuel in it and see here. Let's see if I can get it to run for a couple minutes. Seems like it was getting a little quieter. It's getting fuel pressure. One thing I was concerned about with this thing when I bought it is it had an old fuel filter on it that had looked like it had never been changed in 30 years, but the oil that was in it was brand new. So I was a little concerned that they had run it out of oil and it seized it. And I was wondering if that was my problem is why it wasn't, because it was cranking over really slow, like it didn't have enough voltage. So, but, um, so I don't know. I don't hear it knocking. So at least I know it's a good engine. So I can at least pull it and mothball it for now. Um, I might pull it apart, pull the oil pan off of it, just check the crank, check the rod bearings and all that. Kind of see how bad it really is. But All right, I guess next I'll start tearing this thing apart. I'm going to pull this motor out and start getting this truck ready to disassemble. Thanks for watching.